Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. I've been a Mac user now exclusively for over a year. Uh, I sold my PC and decided to buy a Mac mini instead, and I don't have any regrets in that decision, but one thing that I do miss a little bit is gaming on a PC. I think that we can all agree that Macs are amazing for creative work and productivity, but they aren't exactly the greatest for gaming. I've been lucky enough to have consoles to game on, but one thing that has never really crossed my mind or come up to this point was cloud gaming. This can potentially allow you to game on your Mac without ever having to worry if you have the latest RTX 69 420 graphics card. It can also be super handy if you're traveling and you're just sitting in your hotel room alone with your thoughts and really bad cable TV. So because I already have Xbox Game Pass, I'm able to give cloud gaming a spin. And with owning an iPhone, a desktop Mac, a MacBook and an iPad, I figured, let's just try Xbox Cloud Gaming on all of these, see what the differences are and how usable it is on each device. First things first, I wanted to make sure that I had a decent internet connection and speed to make sure that I can rule out any major network issues that might happen on my end. For all these tests, I'm using Wi-Fi 6 on all of these devices. I have a fiber gigabit connection, but my mesh router will only push out about 700 megabits max up and down. But on all my devices, when speed tested, I'm getting between four and 500 megabits down and around 170 up with a three to five millisecond ping, which overall should be pretty solid. The other thing to take note of here is that the desktop and mobile versions of Xbox Cloud Gaming do run a little bit differently. Uh, on a Mac, everything runs in the browser, whereas on the iPhone and iPad, everything runs through a progressive web app which for those of you who don't know is basically just like an app that's built with web technology that you'll find on a website, but it's packaged up in an app-like experience that sits outside of a browser like Safari or Chrome. Microsoft had to build things this way versus offering a native app experience because Apple would not allow this through their app store, which is unfortunate. I think you'd probably get a little bit better experience there, but in any case, it is easy enough to add to your iPhone and your iPad, the Xbox Cloud Gaming website does a good job of guiding you through that process. The only real requirement you have if you want to cloud game on any device is a controller. Uh, the nice thing being that you don't necessarily have to use an Xbox controller. You can use a PS5 or PS4 controller as long as you can connect it or pair it to your device. Uh, on the mobile apps, there are some touch-based games, but if you want to play any AAA titles or games that you're probably familiar with on a console, you'll definitely want to use a controller. Once you have things set up, it's easy just to pop on and start up a game. Uh, just a note there, you're not going to see all the same titles that you're going to see on your Xbox if you're scrolling through the Game Pass games. It's a little bit more of a narrow library, but it's still pretty extensive and it's good enough to test drive things. The first machine that I tried this out on was my Mac mini in Mac OS. And I tested this out in a bunch of different browsers, which didn't really seem to make any difference. I thought that there might be some advantage to using Edge browser or Safari, but it behaved very much the same, which honestly, was not great. The first thing I noticed when I fired up a game is how fuzzy or degraded that the image looks, which I think does make sense to some extent. Any type of gradient is pixelated and the edges are all really soft. What you're seeing is basically just a stream like watching a YouTube video with controller input. And I know that you do have to worry about things like lag and responsiveness, so I can live with that image degradation. But what I found was when I got in game, uh, the gameplay itself, specifically response time, made things pretty much unusable. The controls lagged so far behind that it just killed the experience. And oftentimes the screen would just freeze up for a few seconds before coming back. Sometimes you'd also just have to sit there for a second to let the movement catch up to your controls. Really not ideal for any game, especially those where you're depending on sudden movements or reactions. There's no chance that you could ever play games like Forza or Halo multiplayer, but even titles that are slower and more methodic like No Man's Sky are still not enjoyable because of how far everything lags behind. I was expecting some lag while playing, but not to this extent, so from there, I decided to just move over to my iPhone, which side note, one cool thing was when I fired up the same game on my iPhone, 
But it basically just picked up where I'd left off on my Mac Mini, which is kind of a neat feature. So I'm assuming that it's running off the same machine instance there, but in any case, the iPhone did work a lot better. The lag was a lot less noticeable and the picture didn't seem as bad. Granted, it's pretty tough to tell going from a 34 inch ultra wide down to a five inch screen. A lot of those little details are hard to see and are probably lost, but the games do seem a lot more playable. Uh, there's still a noticeable difference in response time from when you're hitting the buttons to when they actually show up. And there are those brief pauses at times where the screen will just freeze up for a few seconds, which can obviously kill the experience, say, if you're playing a racing game where you need to be consistently monitoring your position on screen. But with single player games and games where you can take a little more time, it's definitely a lot more playable. If you want to play No Man's Sky or Halo Infinite in campaign mode or Skyrim here, it's totally doable. You could probably manage to go through a game without too much frustration. Uh, overall, it's just a lot better than the web experience. The same goes for the iPad, which makes sense since iPadOS is just basically iOS. I found the experience pretty much the same, except you get a bigger screen, which is a huge plus. And the sound is a lot cleaner, at least on my iPad. With a bigger screen, you can see a few more of those image compression issues show up that you do see on desktop, but the picture still does look a lot cleaner than on the Mac Mini. Recently, there have been some upgrades to these iPhone and iPad apps, which has cleaned up issues people are having and has smoothed out the experience a lot, but for me to actually use this, I'd still need to see some improvements. I still find it pretty awkward, even with a bit of lag that it does have. Uh, even navigating through things like on-screen UI can be a little bit jerky, and there are times when things just freeze up for a second or two. And you know at some point it's going to happen at a really inopportune time, so that's something that would need to be cleared up for me to seriously consider using this on iPhone or iPad, even with the jump in performance from the desktop browser. Finally, my 16-inch MacBook Pro, which was the machine that I was really hoping that this would work on the best, because it does have a beautiful screen and really great sound. And I have noticed that it usually has a little bit better network performance overall, but predictably it behaved just the same as the Mac Mini, uh, very choppy, slow lag, and just overall not a good time. I think on all Apple devices, this is going to be a really difficult technical challenge. Uh, this stuff is all still in beta, so the best that we can hope for now is to see some big jumps in making this cloud platform more playable. The problem is you'd really want to see these run on native applications that aren't web-based to be as performant as possible, and I just don't see Apple letting that happen. Uh, that would probably destroy any profits Apple Arcade makes. As it stands right now, I just can't get into it. I know that doing something like cloud gaming is probably an insanely difficult problem to solve, even if we did have native applications. And I wonder how realistic it is to think that something like cloud gaming will ever overtake console or PC gaming. Sure, we can build better and better apps and systems, but with each step of progress that they make on this, people will be pushing out better hardware and more immersive experiences. And I'm not sure how you'll ever match that in the same way that you can gaming on your own hardware. I guess time will tell, but for now there really is no substitute for gaming on a physical machine. Uh, I do hope that this gets to a place where if you're traveling somewhere and you're having a boring day inside or something, you might be able to pop this up and play a little bit more seamlessly, but they have a lot of work to do here. I want to know what your experience is with cloud gaming. Uh, have you tried it? Did you have a similar experience either with Xbox clouding or Stadia or whatever it is? Uh, drop a comment down below along with anything that you'd like to see show up on this channel. Uh, press that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more tech related morsels, and thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next moving picture.